All right, guys. So right about this time last year, I did a video with electric space heaters, and I wanted to see how easily you could start a fire with them because it's just kind of something that you hear all the time is that you know a space heater caused a fire or whatever. Uh, if you remember that video, we took space heaters and put them, I mean, butted them right up against cotton. I think 100% cotton is what we mainly use because it's you know very flammable, and we didn't get any fire whatsoever out of anything that we put in front of it. I think we even put like printer paper in front of it, if I remember right. <clears throat> and then all that did was like really, all that really did was just kind of like char and it still didn't, even, it still didn't even cause a fire. And the only way we were able to cause a fire was to take like 4,000 watts of electric and pump it through a, an extension cord that was only designed for like 1600 watts. And it had to be wrapped up inside of a towel so that it was like a burrito. And then finally we got a fire. So the electric space heaters proved to be way safer than I thought they were. So today what we're gonna do is kind of, kind of the same thing. <laughs> we're gonna test that out with a propane heater first. And then after, we'll see how this does. And then I have a kerosene heater that we're gonna try out. I'm really curious to see if, like, same thing. If you take these heaters and they're, they're, they're running full blast and you have something bumped up against it, is it going to catch on fire? The standard for a space heater is to keep everything... Uh, I can't find, I actually cannot find, uh, like, how far away you're supposed to keep things from uh, propane heaters. For electric, the standard is, like, I think three feet away. Um, so for this test, three inches probably to start, see what happens. If nothing happens, then we'll uh, move in closer. So this is just a, I think it's just a little buddy or it's a, a portable buddy is what this one is. This is made by Mr. Heater. This is a very standard design uh, propane heater. Real easy to work. Just turn on your pilot light. And we'll crank it on high. It gets hot right off the bat. This thing should start glowing red. And I did measure this element with uh, my laser thermometer whenever it was red hot. And just so you know, the element, not the grate, but the element hovered right around 980 to 1000 degrees, somewhere in there. And this heater also runs, whenever it's on high, it runs at 9000 BTUs. So it's just a little bit shy of uh, what two space heaters at once would produce. All right, this thing is definitely glowing red hot now. All right, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped has sent me their new Shears 2.0 nail kit along with the performance package 4.0. So first let's take a look at this nail kit. It comes in a very nice leather package and it's just a simple nail kit. You have a nail file, you have a nice little pair of scissors, you have a nice uh, little pair of nail clippers, and you have a set of tweezers. So pretty much everything you need, throw that in a little toiletry bag and you're good to go. So now let's check out the performance package 4.0. First thing you get you get the Lawnmower 4.0. This is a waterproof cordless trimmer. It has skin safe technology, so you're not gonna cut or nick yourself. It also has a nice little LED light so you can see what you're trimming. And it also has a 90 minute battery life. It also comes with this handy little stand that acts as a wireless charger. So you get that. You also get, with that, you get two different guards so that you can trim at two different lengths. Those are very nice. And then you also get a bottle of ball toner and you also get a bottle of ball deodorant. And now for a limited time, whenever you buy the Performance Package 4.0, you get a free, you get two free gifts. You get a free pair of anti-chafing boxer briefs and then you also get a nice leather toiletry bag. So it's very nice. So if you wanna check out the Performance Package 4.0 or if you wanna check out the Shears 2.0 nail kit or if maybe you just want to try a new cologne or maybe you need a new ear and nose hair trimmer or maybe you just need a regular, uh, a new razor, you can click the link in the top of my description and if you use code TUBE at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order plus free shipping. And also, before we get started, I just wanna say, no matter what happens, even if nothing catches on fire and I prove that you can put stuff right up against it and nothing happens, no matter what the outcome is, do not put your space heater up against things and risk it. No matter what I prove in this video, 
I'm not saying that it's safe to do anything that is happening in this video. This is just for science. Fully recommend you keep all of your heaters far away from anything flammable. I'm just gonna put that out there before anybody has an aneurysm. For our first test, I have this little, uh, I don't know if we call it a little rig or whatever, just a piece of, uh, piece of a towel that is 100% cotton. And what we're gonna do is just set this in front of here. And that right there is roughly three inches. Oh, that's already smoking. Okay, maybe we don't need to go three inches. That's three inches. I guess three inches is a, lot, is a lot longer than I thought. That's about three inches away. Oh, I can already see it smoking. I think these heaters are gonna be a lot more dangerous than what I anticipated. I'm gonna go ahead and start this timer. This is, this is already smoking. I can already see that it's turning brown. The temperature on the front side of the towel is already 365 degrees. The temperature on the back side of the towel is 530 degrees. I'm really curious if we're gonna have flame. You know what I think is going to happen? I'm slowly seeing this towel just turn kind of brown on the uh, on the back side. And maybe, uh, oh, it hasn't made it to the front side yet. I'm going to call this right now. I think what's going to happen is the towel is just slowly going to like just cook and turn brown. But I don't think it's going to catch on fire. But I guess we'll see. I'm going to let this go for, I'll let it go up to an hour. Or until I guess something happens. So it's been just a little bit over 10 minutes. Um, what you can see from the front hasn't really changed all that much. Let me show you what is on the back. You can see that it, this has turned uh, completely uh, <laughs> brown and it looks pretty burnt. It actually doesn't like really feel that much different. Other than that, not a whole lot's happened. Kind of what I expected to happen has been happening. Let me make sure this is three inches so that my science is good. All right, I'll come back in another 10 minutes. All right, <laughs> it's been 30 minutes. Um, knowledge really changed. The front of it has maybe got a little bit more discolored. I can see, but this isn't, this isn't anything new. This has been happening since the very beginning. There's like a light amount of smoke coming off of the towel that's just kind of like, just kind of been there. Doesn't seem like it's getting better or worse. I don't know. I don't think it's really gonna do anything more. I'm gonna leave it for another 30 minutes just to be sure. And if nothing happens in another 30 minutes, I mean, that's an hour straight of it just sitting in front of the heat full blast. If it doesn't happen in an hour, I don't think it's gonna happen. We'll go another hour, and we'll see. All right, it's officially been one hour. Uh, <laughs> Same thing is still happening. I can see like a steady, a steady stream of like smoke coming off. Other than that, there's really nothing going on. Turn that off. Flip this around here for you. So <laughs> that's what the other side looks like. It's obviously burnt. It smells burnt. Anyway, so. I mean, it looks like maybe it was like starting to burn or like starting to do something. It, st it f still feels, I mean, just incredibly soft. Just as soft as like the other side before it even got touched. So I would think that if it was like, great, now my whole hand's gonna be all charred. If it was on the verge of like getting ready to ignite that this would kind of be like, I guess crisp would be the right way to put it. Just kind of, uh, you know, like actually starting to burn. Um, I don't see that happening at all. <laughs> it's obviously weak from being charred. I did not think that was gonna rip that easy. That's kind of crazy. I mean, that shows how charred it is, that it just like, just rips that easy. We still got no fire, no fire whatsoever. I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get another piece of this towel and then we're gonna just butt it up right against that grate. Put it as close as we possibly can and then see if maybe we can get a fire. New piece of cloth. 
Except for this time, we are going to go all the way up against the grate. I'm going to start the timer. All right, here we go. I already hear something happen. You know, probably a minute for that heater to, for that element to get red hot. We've got, we've got to have fire on this one. We have to. I can already see lots of smoke. Pretty good amount of smoke. Oh, it's instantly turning brown. Way more smoke than before. Way more brown. Oh, we, we gotta have fire in no time. Come on. I know you want, I know the fire's there. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Is it really not actually gonna catch a flame? What is that? Is there a flame? Oh, wow. The fabric is ripping apart before there's an actual flame. That's crazy. Like it's burning a hole, but it's not like an active flame. So that only took like three minutes. So it's like, it's it like it's burning, but it's like not like an active, it's not like an active fire. It's just like slowly, it just like slowly heated it up until it just started like smoldering. Go ahead, finish it off. All right, I thought maybe the sides of this would have got like real hot or something, but not at all. It still didn't cause an active flame. I thought at some point when that fabric was in front of the, the grate, it would have slowly started heating up and then it kind of would have just, poof, and then there would have, it would have like, you know, burst into flames and there would have been an active fire. But it just slowly heats it up until it starts to um, just smolder and it slowly just kind of just smolders away. So even if this was like in your house and it started a fire, like it's still gonna start a fire, but it's not going to, I don't wanna say it's not gonna spread very quickly, but it's good, like it'd take a while, you know? And, and obviously you'd have to like butt it up like right against something for it to actually like burn something, which is kind of crazy. Since it's already smoky in here, we might as well go ahead and uh, take it to the extreme, turn it back on high. I'm gonna let this heat up and then I wanna try just some, just some regular paper see if paper will like burst into flames or if it will just uh, smolder, just like the, the uh, towel did. So I have just a regular piece of printer paper. I'm just gonna lay it right here. See what happens. Oh, we instantly got a brown spot up here. Really? It looks like it's gonna do the exact same thing. It's literally just gonna smolder to death. This is, this is crazy. This is almost the exact same thing that happened with the electric space heaters. Oh, no. Ooh, we finally, we finally have a, oh, it's getting hot. We still really don't have flame. It's just smoldering. And that took, I don't know how long that was, probably five, six minutes of paper. Something that is extremely flammable. That is crazy. All right, I'm gonna air this place out and then we're gonna move on to something else. All right, so now that we got now that we got the smoke cleared out of here, we're gonna do some tests with the kerosene heater. This is just a very basic, very popular kerosene heater that I'm sure most of you have seen or used at some point. Um, it's literally just a, a kerosene reservoir with a wick, and then it just, it's obviously just, it's like a giant candle, basically, that is fueled by kerosene. The propane heater, like I said, put out 9,000 BTUs. This puts out 23,000 BTUs. So more than double the amount of heat, but kind of spread along a, a bigger area. So I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna um, affect things. Uh, the top of it right here, and not the grate, but the actual, like the top of it is only, well, I say only, but it's 563 degrees, which is, you know, about half of what the propane heater was but the propane heater was just in a smaller area. This is, you know, a bigger area. Um, not sure how it's gonna affect it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, I'm literally just gonna put like a, a whole just bath towel on top of the grate and we're just gonna see what happens because I feel like this style heater is probably more prone to cause fires, not necessarily because the heater itself is more dangerous, I just feel like having this grate and like just this design, this flat top design makes it very prone for people to like lay things on top of it and or something like that. So 
Uh, I feel like that's a very common thing that somebody might do is, you know, get out of the shower or whatever, throw their towel on top of the heater, and uh, hopefully it doesn't just instantly smoke out the entire garage. All right, three, two, one. Just gonna put that right there. A part of me thinks that where this is such a bigger area that it might just do, uh, it might just do what the propane heater did whenever the uh, towel was like, you know, three inches away. It just kind of got like, you know, really brown and that was kind of really it. There's not a lot of heat coming through, honestly. Oh, well, it is. <laughs> It's climbing. It was when I first when I first just shined it on here. It was at 200, and that was already at 250. It's starting to smoke. I can see the smoke. I might have, I might have been way off on this one. This one might catch fire really fast. This one might catch fire really fast. That smoke is really picking up. I don't know if maybe it's getting too hot or something. But the back side of the the wick it looks like the flame is kind of going down. I wonder if the towel being over top of it is kind of uh, stopping the oxygen from getting in. Oh, we we are at 300 and 350 to 60 degrees, depending on where you where you put it. I mean, I don't know what I expected. It's more than double the amount of heat. Oh, I just know any minute it's gonna start smoldering or doing something. We're we're not even five minutes in. We're only four and a half minutes in. It's already getting getting bad. I'm really starting to see discoloration on the top. There's a lot. Back here on the back that you probably can't see. Oh, we're up to 400. We're almost, we're almost at the same temperature that the top of the plate's at. Ooh, is that, is that a fire? Ooh, I think we got a fire right here. Uh, not really a fire, it's smoldering. And there's not really a whole lot happening all the, other than a lot of smoke. Oh, I'm gonna have to air out the garage again. There's so much smoke in here. This little place that kind of uh, didn't really catch on fire, but started smoldering, kind of went out. Four, I just hit 440 degrees. I can see a lot of like a lot of smoke coming out of this this front portion. Like there's something something about to happen. We're not even 10 minutes in. We're just about to hit nine minutes. <coughs> All right, it's getting way too smoky in here. I'm gonna have to call it quits at that. Uh, we are at four, oh, still about 440 degrees. Go ahead and take this off. See what the damage is. Ooh, look at that. There's actually a couple spots where it is uh, actually smoldering. And it's, it's very, very, very weak. I can literally just rip this thing in half. It's crazy how, how burnt that is, but yet it's only like one, two, I think I see four spots where it's actually smoldering. All right, I gotta air this place out. So <laughs> we finally got the garage aired out again. I think we started off a little bit strong by just completely covering the entire heater and uh, you know, smoking out the entire garage. Um, that was probably a little bit strong. We probably should have, uh, you know, tried some other tests and then kind of went all out. I guess we'll do it reverse. Anyway, I think that uh, where we covered the top, where obviously heat rises, so most of the heat is here. I feel like that's really caused uh, a lot of like the charring and stuff to happen. But I feel like if we just like wrap the heater around, but we leave the top open, I feel like I feel like the towel can like literally probably just sit around the heater, and honestly, probably I won't be surprised if it sits there for like an hour or two and literally nothing happens because there's not like a ton of heat that comes out from the sides, but there's a pretty decent amount. I really feel like this this heater is going to be pretty safe if it were to be you know like bumped up against something, just not so much things that are on top of it. Wrap this thing up in a blanket, a blanket. Towel. You know, we don't want to. We don't want it to get cold. Hopefully, I'm gonna try to leave this bottom open. I don't want to choke out all the oxygen. Timer started. Let's see what happens.
so it's been just uh, like four minutes short of an hour. So we're gonna take this off and look at it. But before we do that, the top of this towel is averaging about 230 degrees. In the middle, we're at about 190. So it's actually not gotten very hot. And it's literally, let me show you here. It's actually kind of like blowing my mind a little bit. I don't know if you're even gonna be able to tell on camera. This is the, the outside, and this is the side that was wrapped around the heater. I don't know how well you can see it. Oh jeez, this thing's hot. On the outside, like up on the, in the middle area, you can see it's like, I mean, just a tiny little bit brown. There's, I mean, just the tiniest little tinge of brown. I mean, it's basically nothing. I'm actually, I'm impressed. Basically what I said, not, not even what I said that was gonna happen happened. I thought that it would get like, you know, kind of brown and, and then that kind of maybe be it and maybe possibly, you know, get semi burnt, but like wouldn't actually catch on fire or anything. I wouldn't have guessed that it like would have done virtually nothing. As long as you don't put anything, on top of the heater. I mean, obviously I would never suggest that you like, like put something on the side to this thing. But I mean, obviously it's not as dangerous as you would think. Like if you, if you hold your hand here and you feel how much heat is coming off of here, you would think this is, this would be really dangerous to have cloth or have anything flammable near here. So, so I want to show you something that I tried off camera. With the uh, propane here, you know, we put the piece of paper on there to try to get it to, uh, to see if it would catch it on fire. With this one, <laughs> this almost has like a, uh, it's almost like a built-in safety mechanism. There's so much heat rising up out of the top of it. If you try to put a piece of paper on top. Oh, that actually might stay. No. <laughs> the, once it heats up, the heat just, just takes the paper and makes it like fly away. So you almost can't even put a piece of paper on top of it to even see, to even like let it catch on fire. Although you can kind of, yeah, if I sit it there, it'll stay. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. I already let a piece of paper sit on here for like an hour and a half and literally this is the same piece of paper and nothing happened. So we are not gonna waste our time. I guess it turns out that uh, these heaters just really aren't as dangerous as you would think. Now, of course, the propane and the kerosene heaters are far more dangerous than the electric heaters. The electric ones, if you remember, literally couldn't even start a fire if you wanted to. Take something flammable and like jam it inside of the heater to even get anything remotely close to a flame. But still, in order to start a fire with one of these things, I mean, you would have to be doing something absolutely ridiculous. I mean, like with the towel over the kerosene heater, you'd have to literally cover the entire kerosene heater. And then even then, it's really, you're just gonna kinda, I mean, you're gonna smoke yourself out before you're gonna actually like catch a flame and you're really get something on fire. And pretty much the same with this. I mean, we put it three inches away, closer than three inches to the grate. I mean, you just have to be like completely negligent and just not paying attention whatsoever. I guess, it, I mean, it's obviously a positive that it's so hard to start a fire with these. And these are actually, as far as fire safety, way safer than you would uh, think. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If there's anything else that you want to see me test, like if there's, I don't know, some other space heater that maybe you think might uh, start a fire more easily or something that you think isn't safe or some safety thing that you want me to test or whatever, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.